Okay. Last time on Avalon with Alex the Human Pharmacon Rafe, Curtin the Nafine Sniper Consort, Ivan the Atlan Encanter, Nevo the Atlan Necros, Jack the Nafine Armorist, and Simon the Human Phantom Thief Montebank. <coughs> oh man. Our party says goodbye to their little cabin by the river and says hello to the quaint little town of Copotelgo. Having acquired a new peon in the form of the seemingly immortal Baxter T. Goblinson, a former member of the sovereign goblin community of reputable brigandry logistics, the, pat the crew packs up and heads north to their new location. Having reached town, the party is now settled in into a small hotel and allowed a brief moment of rest to settle in, all the while with the promise of drinks later night courtesy of their employer, Jane Lindsman. And I will shift everyone over to the hotel map, courtesy of Tom Cartos of Patreon. There we go. First floor, second floor. I got everyone's tokens down at the bottom. Um, and I finally have a little... I just used Jane Goodall's uh, icon for Dr. Lindsman. Uh, <laughs> first floor is on the left, second floor is on the right. And I have a token for your new subordinate, which I will fully admit I, I literally just took out of the uh, one of the Pathfinder rule books. <laughs> there, <he is. laughs> there we go. All right. So uh, we are going to start off where we just left left off with you guys kind of getting settled in into town. Uh, let me see here. Since Gypsy will not be joining us today, Simon will be ducking on out, presumably go to Simon things. That's concerning. <laughs> Lol. Let's go. Simon stuff. To go do Simon things. All right. So, you guys are allowed a brief moment of respite throughout the day. Now you guys to kind of get comfortable on in. Oh, and I'll set my timer. There we go. All right. Otherwise, give me a hands up for if there's anything you need to do in town. Otherwise, we'll just kind of zip on through the day. You guys arrive, arrived here early in the morning, so I'm going to say it's like... Uh, by the time you guys get everything packed on out of the trailer, um, it'll be like 10 a.m. Uh, probably just look around and see what there is to see of the town. Okay. Da -da 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 -da. I see Ivan is typing. Are you trying to throw your hand up or are you just typing? Oh, I'm just... I'm just posting something silly. Okay. Uh, let me see here. Alex, as you're kind of wandering on through, it is, it's a, it's a small town. Um, very rural. Um, let me see here. A lot of mom and pop shops. Uh, you see off on the, like, right on the border of town, they've got an old, like, big old radio tower that acts as their... Um, electrical conduit to the power company and along the border of town they have uh, these uh, watchtowers set up something simple something that can be deconstructed quickly and put up quickly in the event that like they just need a security post or the town starts expanding it's just some place for the town like guard um, to kind of keep a lookout into the wilderness Oh, thank God, no more guard duty. <laughs> <laughs> you are, you are. We got a roof over our head. Got a roof over your head. You got second floor. I will say there's this room on the second floor that, despite on the map, looks like just a bunch of rubble. That is actually um, men and women's bathroom. It's divided down the middle. There's a tub. There's a bath. There's a there's a bathtub. There's a toilet. Uh, so a place where you guys can finally get a shower without yeah. bathing in pond scum. <laughs> hmm. Bathing in research material. <laughs> bathing in research mm. material, yes. 
<laughs> all right to baxter look all i'm gonna say is that working with us group will increase your uh and proceeds to two that, fish that was a joke that was a joke <gasps> that was a joke that was all not right. actually what i was saying well we can read it out loud for the stream uh-huh all right okay and he got your hand up Ivan. Yeah. Uh, this is gonna sound silly. I'm going to go to uh to one of the people in the city and ask them. So, what is the cicada situation like in this town? Uh, let me see here. You want to gather information? Uh, roll me a diplomacy check. I love okay. that he takes this completely seriously. <laughs> you end up talking to a master cicada. <laughs> it's a cicada in disguise. <laughs> a living cicada man. I mean, with oh, the no. cicadas who the cicada us, cold has rise. He should take it seriously. All right, so roll that diplomacy, Ivan. Eighteen. Eighteen. Okay. Da, 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 da. You're kind of wandering on town. You end up uh, shooting the shit with a couple of people um, sitting out in front of like the barber shop. Just a group of old men who kind of like hang out there, uh, reading the newspaper, playing chess, and um, they just basically smirk, kind of shake their heads. Damn things are absolute murder out there, I tell you. Flat had one flying oh. to my to my window the other day, splattered like crazy. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Good thing to know. Probably let others know. Also, hey, that is a legitimate question in this campaign. It really is. Oh, oh we know, unfortunately. Alright. And let me see if there's anything. Checking my list. Anything else about the town? Um, honestly, not really too much. It's just kind of this, like, podunk little town. General store? Saloon? Yeah, general store. There's a small, uh, general store. And, uh, looks like a small town bar. Saloon. Saloon. Well, speaking of that. Is there a whole lot that we have to do today? Dr. Lindsman kind of looks over her notes. Um, not really. I'm kind of expecting us to get to work tomorrow. Now's just kind of a chance. I'm giving us a chance to just kind of sit back and relax after the week that we had down by the river. Can I ch give my students a chance to kind of relax before anything else? And for us to get any supplies ready, I still need to make a call back to the university, let them know that we have samples that they need to come and pick up. Um, and I'm also going to have to inform the Wilderness Bureau, Bureau about that goblin tribe we ran into. I'm sure they need to keep track of that. Even if they are now not exactly existent anymore. And she kind of, like, awkwardly looks down at Baxter, who's just kind of <laughs> picking his nose off to the side. Yeah. So, uh, what are we supposed to do tomorrow? What was, like, the list? Alright, let me bring up the contract documents. Uh, contract, University of New Vidnolik. Here we go. Um, our main goal for... We're going to be spending about 10 days here. That's the plan, at least. Uh, we're going to be collecting venom uh, from, from the snakes in this area. We are planning on selling them off to... Um, well, in addition to getting genetic samples from them, we are also uh, donating a good chunk of, or handing a good chunk of them over to medical universities to turn into anti-tox, or anti-venom. Mm -hmm. Um, we, depending upon how many we'll collect, we'll actually be more than happy to share on the profits with you. Mm -hmm. Since we actually are going to be selling these off. Um, 
Besides from that, we also need to capture, tag, and take blood <laughs> samples from at least five chupacabras. Right. There's oh, been a small no. pack of them around this area. Yep, there sure it is. <laughs> and then, um, if possible, I we have been hearing rumors about an albino balete that's been seen in the area. Um, we need to check and make sure it's whether or not it's actually a more locally known bolete known as Old Satchmo, um, who's been traditionally found off to the west of here, actually, living in sort of the Badlands area. Um, if it is him, well, we're just going to have to report it. If it's not, then, well, good news. We have another rare sample living within the area. Um, we... How would you know if it was him or if it was another albino bolete? Well, we do have, um, a record of notable scars on its body. <laughs> it's not quite as intricate as a fingerprint, naturally, but it's the best that we have right now. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, that, I don't feel comfortable taking on just at this moment. I have been informed that I should meet up with a gentleman living in this town uh, by the name of Jehoshaphat. He was someone who volunteered his services to the university to help us capture or possibly even tag um, this bolete. Yeah, that is a fantastic name. <laughs> I believe the townsfolk refer to him as Big Joe. Less cool, Quite but unique. that's fine. So, I know what I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be seeing what I can find on Big Joe. And she kind of, like, looks through her notes, like, uh, is there a better name I can call him? And it's like, oh, whatever. Um, my students are going to be getting... <laughs> my students are going to be getting those photographs that the group of you captured... Uh, developed. They're going to be getting stuff prepped for this week. And like I said before, once uh, once the moon pops up, drinks are on me. A little celebration yeah. to uh, mark your first week of victory. Oh. Appreciate it. She gives you all a smile. Until then, you're free. I guess... Pretty much just hang out around town. Whatever you need to do. Yep. Get, get supplies, check in on any affairs that you have. Mm. And with that, she kind of gives you uh, the two-finger salute. And um, walks on out the door. Starts making her way uh, to the town. Da, 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 da. Wait, you're collecting me? I didn't know I was an invasive species. You are an invasive species, Venom. Damn. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, Ivan, yeah, you got. <laughs> Ivan, you got your hand up. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> uh, Ivan will walk back to the others after talking to the old man, old men to get information, stuff like that. And I'll be like, okay, so apparently cicadas are really bad around here. Well, just try to keep your mouth shut if you go running. <laughs> Alex? That was it. Alex? <laughs> Is there a bank? Uh, ba, 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 ba. Uh, I'm checking on through. Okay, it looks like their bank is kind of merged in with the post office, so it's like a really tiny bank. It's like a fantastic, like a local branch of something. Do telephones exist? Uh, yes, telephones do exist. 
do phone books exist? Uh, da, 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 da. Could I look up a service in the city from here? What service are you wanting to look up? Something that may or may not resemble, like, a private investigator? Okay. Um. Da, 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 da. Here we go. Um, you actually remember Justice Fist actually counts as private investigation. Fantastic. Among their, their number. Among their many, many jobs. <laughs> okay, great. I wish I'd thought of this earlier, but now it works. I'm going to do a thing. If anybody else wants to go, I'll wait. No, go ahead. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm going to... Remembering this, double checking my wallet, slide into the car and call Justice Fest. Okay. With the little mirror thingy. Boop, boop, beep, boop, boop. Do you know how the mirror thingy works? Yes, I am the first person who read the manual. Bring, bring. It didn't mention the phone in the manual. Oh, hold on, let me uh, get in the character. <clears throat> Justice fist, there ain't a problem that we can't fist. Hi, uh, it's Alex again. What's your name? Oh, hi, hon, it's Janine. How you doing? Janine, gonna try to remember that. So we're doing okay, gotten to uh, the second location on our job. I was wondering if maybe... I could hire somebody over there to do a quick job for me, though. Oh, shit thing, hon. What do you need done? Uh, I need somebody found and also told something. <laughs> the yeah. finding part's probably going to be the harder part, though. Okay, who are you looking for, hon? My brother is supposed to have come into the city without giving me any kind of contact information and me not having a chance to give him any, so... Oh, okay. Yeah, we can we can just do that for you, hon. We can just keep an really? eye out for him. Yeah! That would be great if you could maybe look for him. I can give you, like, a description and... Yeah, give us a description, uh, his name. Yeah. Uh I I describe I describe Jose and uh dark hair, sort of curly, pretty good looking, not that tall. <laughs> Accent like mine. Uh he broke his nose once, so it's kinda crooked. He says it gives his face character. Anyway, um and yeah, if if somebody could look for him, that would be great. And if you find him, tell him that I sent whoever finds him and that he's a fucking idiot and that I'm out of town on the job for you guys and so that he shouldn't have hung up the fucking phone <laughs> but I told him where to find me. All right, uh, tell him, don't... He shouldn't have hung up the phone and he's a Yoda. Good. Uh... Yeah. <laughs> uh, just yeah, I guess. All right. And this is this is just like a favor type thing, or I mean, I have a little bit of money if you. Don't don't worry about it, hon. We look out for each other here at Justice Fist. Oh, I really appreciate that. Every okay, every fist so much. every fist has got your back. Yeah. <laughs> please, please. Dear well, Lord. You're gonna uh, fucking make me die of laughter. I guess I'll I'll check in uh, in the evening or something. Friendly. You're not a problem, hon. I'll keep the phone hot for you. Alright. Uh thank you. You're welcome, babe. Have a good day. You too, bye. Drink. No. Shit, I should have written her name down. <laughs> what was her name again? Janine. Oh no! <laughs> think of think of the receptionist from Ghostbusters. Oh, is that her name too? Mm-hmm. 
All right. I write it in my journal. All right. That it for you? Yes. And curtain. So on the mention of a bar, because my character has um, the bar room uh, talent sphere, does need to acquire alcohol to you to use any of those traits. Okay. Da, 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 da. All right. So you head on over to the saloon. Um, it's a tiny little place. It is. Um, ba, 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 ba. It's got a counter, a couple, a uh, couple of seats up front. Got the radio playing. Um, da, 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 da. And only like a few tables here and there along the wall, kind of right next to the window. It's got a big old overhanging porch uh, that some people are kind of hanging out in front of. Lovely. All right. You head on in? Yes, indeed. All right. Let me see here. You head on inside. All right. And you see a little Umbrian male uh, kind of hanging out behind the counter. He's standing on a step stool so he can see over his counter. Um, just kind of shining some glasses. Um, duh, 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 duh. Doesn't look like he's serving alcohol this hour just because it is still like, it's like before noon. Uh, he looks like he's mostly like serving water and coffee. Coffee? Heck, I was making an Irish one, but that's fine. <laughs> uh, simply walks up to the co- counter and ask him, how's he doing? Not too bad, mate. How you doing? Oh, hanging in there. Just in town for a couple of days. Hmm. Not much to do around these parts. Just got your passing on through. Yeah, fair enough. That's why I decided to come here. Seems like a good place for people with nothing to do. Hmm. Oh, well, that about right. Can I get you anything? Yeah, not going to have much time to enjoy it here, so how about a bottle of Fur Road? Bottle of Fur Road? What you looking for? Uh, whiskey's usually best to wet the whistle, but depends what you what you have available. I got some whiskey around the corner. Yeah, that actually raises a question. What time is it in yeah, the game? Yeah, it's like noonish. Well, it's five o'clock somewhere. Uh, let me bring up. I'm not sure if you're an alcoholic, but yeah. What, bringing up the price of Al- of Alchemy Hall. Alcho- Understandable. Hall. There we go. Man, I cannot spell that to save my life. Uh. <laughs> Let me see here. You need a bottle, not grog, not ice cap ale. You don't need a gallon of whiskey. Uh, Uh, So, according to this, uh, I usually... Here we go. Uh, The the illegal alcohol costs only about 50 to 75 cents per gallon. Here we go. Do, 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 do. Here we go. And we'll we'll say, we'll it. say it's mm-hmm. like a mug's worth. So, you're needing, you're wanting an entire bottle of whiskey, preferably. Let me see here. That'll be five cents, oh. please. Hmm. What's that in copper and silver? Uh, that'll be five copper. Five copper. Okay. <laughs> Uh, actually, make it two. Unfortunately, we're in the we're gonna be in the forest for quite a while. All right, heads around, picks up uh, two bottles, puts them out on the counter. That'll be ten cents then. Lays the copper on the table for him. Pleasure doing business with you. Places the pennies down. Scoops them on up, tosses them into his register. No problem, mate. 
I'm sure cheap in my alcohol. short time here you'll see me for see me around. Mm. Nods his head, goes back to kind of cleaning up his bar. Mm. All right. Let's see. Anyone else have anything else they need to do? Uh, nope. I, I kind of had to call the justice for so I guess I would head to the car, uh, as well. Okay. Uh, is Alex still there, or? Uh, I'd say around this time, Alex would have finished up with her, uh, with her phone call and would have been wandered off. Just leaning it on the side, having a smoke or something. Yeah. Okay. Uh, excuse me, Alex. Yeah? I, uh, need to call Justice Fist. Okay. Well, mirrors in there. I didn't know the car was locked. And thought it would be rude to... to Takes just the open keys it without out of telling my you. cop pocket and unlocks it for him. <laughs> I appreciate the consideration. We're just going to update them about, uh, Baxter joining the group. Baxter? Oh, your little goblin friend? Yes. Uh, okay. I mean, I don't know if he really counts as, like, a paid member other than paid by us in, like, fish, but, uh, Might I guess. be better to let them know just to see. And a dead bird. Okay. Right, and the dead bird. Sorry, Baxter. <laughs> <laughs> Is Baxter actually with me? Baxter's over on the porch. He's kind of got his legs kind of kicking over the side. Oh, uh, I would have asked Baxter to come with me. Just follow him around like a dog. Bitty, 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 bitty. All right, scurries on over to you. Uh, well, I mean, okay. I'm going to call them again, like, in the evening just to do, like, regular like, checks and I figure and also make sure that that Atlantean guy hasn't leveled the city. You know. It's probably good to call them every day anyway. But, uh, uh, go ahead. He is going to go in the car and use the mirror phone. Okay. Uh, dials up Justice Fist headquarters. Bring, 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 bring. Justice Fist, we fist it, we buy it. Uh, <laughs> hi, this is Ivan. Oh, hi, Ivan. How you doing, hon? Um, okay. Uh, we apparently recruited some... Or, uh, not apparently. We recruited somebody in our... In our crew, and I'm curious if I need to update about that. Or talk to someone about that. You managed to get us a new hire already? God, you've only been on the job for like a day. <laughs> Don't give him too much credit. <laughs> <laughs> Wait for it, Janine. <laughs> well, how'd you manage to bring on? I'm confused that you're saying wait for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, so, is she able to see me, or is... It's, uh, it's just audio. Or is it just like she's on the phone? It's, it's just like she's on the phone. Oh, okay. Um, I... I got a goblin by the name of Baxter. Oh, no kidding. Just like the boys. Yes, say hi, Baxter. Uh, hi, Baxter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, lordy. Well, welcome on board, hon. We'll get some paperwork ready for yes, you when so you're back. I was curious if there's anything... Oh, never mind. Um, okay, so I'm guessing there's nobody else I need to contact about this, or...? Um, I mean, he contacted us. We'll, we'll get him signed up. Should we be expecting him? Understood. Uh, he's currently going to be with us because there's no way that we can really bring him back in time. Oh. Or soon. 
Okay. Huh. All right, we'll just have the paperwork ready for him then. Uh, I will bring him to Justice's office after this assignment. All right, we'll be expecting y'all. Okay. Uh, I've been signed out. All right. Make note of that. Cool. Walks out. All right. Well, that's it. Cool. Good. All right. And with that, we will skip on through the day. Yeah, it is like the definition of just a small town. Um, it, this is about as boring a place as you can imagine. Like, you you guys remember, like, the week of horror out in the forest where it was just constantly things trying to murder you. You, you. Like, you feel like any sort of crime in this town would just break people. <laughs> just... <laughs> it's like, people just kind of going about their business. Very, like, most people ride on bikes to and fro uh, from this, their occupation. It's kind of like an... Is this kind of like the, uh, like old west kind of settlement? Um, I'm trying to think. Are we it's, in armadillo right now? It feels like, it feels like somebody took a town the size of armadillo and turned and basically modernized it into a 1920s town. It is small. The buildings are, are antique, uh, but everything else is inside is like modern. Uh, so you feel like this town might have been here for a while, but it just doesn't seem like it ever grew beyond its, like, starting size. How's the average population age doing? Uh, da, 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 a lot of older folk. Um, every once in a while you see a kid um, run about. Let me see here. There is a school. Playing stick <laughs> Playing, playing stickball. <laughs> out in the field you do see a couple kids playing baseball um let me see here not really any official like baseball field they're more like they set it up with like pillows as the bases um got kids like fishing out near a, a creek or sorry a crick on the <laughs> outskirts of town how many kids are pushing hoops with sticks Three. <laughs> They're having a race. <laughs> Looks like someone lost that fourth wheel. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> Whether or not they strip these uh, these wheels off somebody's car, you don't know. Yeah, it could be. Don't worry about it. Well, yeah. Alex is gonna spend the slow day chatting with the students. And, like, asking about the research, might as well learn a thing or two. Okay. Uh, let me see. Is there anything in particular you ask them about? Um, yeah, just being conversational, asking them about, like, their majors and what kind of stuff they study and what all this pond scum and blood and venom and stuff has to do with anything important. <laughs> Okay, so talking with them, you basically learn um, they're out here doing a number of jobs for different professors, uh, so it's not just like one thing tied to their department. Um, basically, the university gave them a list and was like, hey, are you able to do this? Because it's dangerous going out into the wild. You got massive mm -hmm. insects, you got monsters, you got dragons flying around. So it's kind of hazardous just to send people out into the field unprotected. Um, so let me bring up the lit. Let me grab my list of people. Um, oh, it's already up there. But da -da -da -da. here we go. Dylan, uh, the human male. Um, his major is genetics, uh, and in <laughs> particular microbiology. Uh, he is, um, interested in like protozoa 
and just water-based microbes, uh, their natural evolution and stuff like that. Let me see here. You have uh, Astrid, who was uh, the Nafine girl. She she was kind of along the similar lines. Um, she doesn't seem quite as enthusiastic about it as Dylan is. Dylan is just like absolutely nerding out um, <laughs> when you ask him about it. Astrid is just like, ah, oh, yeah, there's there's a lot of good money in this, and and this is kind of what I'm what I've kind of set my life to, and this and this and this, following in my dad's steps. Uh, yeah, was he like a big time scientist or? A- <laughs> lab lab assistant uh, you, get, you didn't have any other uh, aspirations well she kind of shuffles her shoulders kind of when you ask that you know I always wanted to be in one of those moving pictures I bet you would be great as an actress. Oh, I know! Uh. (laughs) What's your favorite movie? What kind of actress would you want to be? Oh, my God. I saw this adaptation of An Affair in Scarlet recently. And, oh, my God, it was so dreamy. (laughs) So, yeah. I just chat with all of them a bunch. Uh, It's like... Two other ones what are there um, or whatever Salem who was the uh the umbran like the older umbran uh nah, guy he <laughs> uh he goes on in length about how he was a hunter he was straight up like a big game hunter out of Kumari um aka <laughs> Africa until he just had this sudden like epiphany as he called it and went to uh, ecological conservation. And then there was the goblin, Crumble Dumble, who just likes fish. <laughs> so her major is ich- ichthyology? Yes, ichthyology. Amazing. She's. Yeah. Alright. Day passes on by. Sun slowly sinks down over the horizon, casting a great red glow across the land. Um, let me see here. You see... Uh, my question still stands. How many rooms did we rent? Oh, I didn't even see that. Yeah, you gotta hold I up your... I this hard. Yeah, you gotta hold up your hand or else I don't see it. Um, let me see here. It's the entire top floor. Uh, so one, two, three rooms. Uh, out of game. Quick question. Yeah? Are these people in these rooms? Like, these three and this fox person? Is, oh, are they that. all part of our group? E- I'm pretty sure this is how we split everything up. I'm in with the girls, and then the other two rooms are boy rooms. Yeah, the, uh... The fox token represents Salem. Uh, the dude token represents Dylan. So, oh, Nevo, you're on the first floor. Yeah, left side is first floor, right side is second floor. And he will. So, free mm. drinks? Uh, Ivan will. Ivan will suggest that. The other room get at least uh, two of us, maybe me and Jack in in one room, or me and Kurt in one room, and Nevo and uh, Jack in another room. Yeah. Like any of those, or is that way we have like that way we have two, uh, one caster, one one more kind of melee person. I'll let you guys figure that out. And, uh, Tom, I moved your token over to the second floor. So you can move yourself into one of those rooms. 
After free drinks tonight, right? <laughs> yes. As I was about to get to, you see, um, as night begins to fall, Dr. Lensman kind of wanders on in, uh, grabs her coat out of the car, um, meets up with all of you and says, ladies and gentlemen, like I said, drinks are on me tonight. And you hear her students go, yeah, and then she turns to all of them, you all are staying here. Aww. <laughs> it's like, them. yeah, aww. <laughs> I've been. As university students, you have to hold up the highest. You have mm. to hold up the highest performance as expected by the new Nidvolik University. As future wow. scientists. You see them all kind of hang their heads, and she turns to all of you. Let's get blackout drunk. <laughs> 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 We'll bring you back some butternuts, chicos. Actually, I was about to say, I was about to say, Ivan would look at Curtin and just whisper, maybe we should bring them a few drinks on the way back. That's up to you. I'm not getting any children thrown out of university for sneaking alcohol on a school trip. I didn't go to school, but I heard, I've heard that that's a big no-no. but I'll move your turtle. Here we go. Uh, oh, by the way, I would let Baxter sleep in this room uh, and even pull out like a bedroll for him. <sighs> Most gracious. All right, Baxter is that you got to stay behind. He's going to tuck him. So he's actually going to take the bedroll that you gave him. He's going to roll it out underneath your bed. And you just see him, like, bend back and limbo underneath your bed. <laughs> <laughs> he just kind of disappears into the dark. <laughs> ah, just like home. You know you don't have to do that, right? But I like the dark. The darkness is my ally. He shrugs. Okay. <laughs> I am the ally of the darkness. I am back. Man, <laughs> I'm just waiting to come, come back uh, at night, and we just see red glowing eyes under, under the bed because Baxter always sleeps with his eyes open. Baxter kind of That's pokes his head out. Slightly terrifying. First rule of Goblinomics: a hidden sleeping place is a protected sleeping place. And he slides back in. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I guess if we're getting drinks, Ivan will get some drinks. Uh, he's mostly gonna get vodka, if they have it. Alright. Uh, you guys head on down the road to the tavern. Uh, you guys pretty much take up the entirety of the counter. And Dr. Lensman starts ordering drinks for you all. She throws down Woo. a couple bucks. Hell yeah. Alright. I'm making sure to get a few get some water as well. Alright. In which case, Ivan orders vodka. Da, 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 da. Okay. Whiskey and cigarettes. <laughs> Whiskey and cigarettes. Wait, this is the 1920s, not the 1950s. Hush up, boy. They're the perfect mix in any decade. <laughs> so I am subtracting oh, them. Alright. Let me see here. Uh, actually, he'll also ask if there's sake. Good luck with that. The bartender oh, kind of cocks his head to the side, and he looks down at his feet. Buddy, I'm umbering. I don't wear socks. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. No, sake. It's a does, sort of rice wine from... Does this look from, like rice country to you? From, uh... <laughs> It's from Shishan territory. Oh, we don't have any of that fancy stuff, I'm afraid. You want oh, that? You okay. go. You go to the big city. Oh, okay. Uh, vodka will be fine then. All right. Pulls out a bottle well, of vodka. You can, always, you can always count on potatoes and corn. Damn straight. Mm. Oh God, my accent changed again. 
<laughs> I didn't. I, I like didn't that know. This guy's just changing on the fly. I didn't know you were sort of multilingual. So. Uh, oh God. Where's my pills? I'm having a stroke. Oh no. Oh it's God. Okay, it happens all the time. All right. Here we go. All right. There, as the night kind of goes on, Dr. Lensman's going to turn to you guys. So what exactly got you guys into the mercenary business? Complications. That's huh? how it always... Wait, I guess. Hmm? This seemed like the reasonable next step after the military. Kind of shrugs. I can see that. I know Justice. I know the Justice Boys have been gathering up soldiers ever since the end of the war. Give himself a good occupation for all those who can't just all that well. You rolled yourself in with a good group. I've known them for years. They're weird, very weird, but they get the job done. I feel like you all fit in quite well. Hmm. I'll hopefully take that as a compliment. Take it. <laughs> mm. <laughs> kind of so, uh, not to pry too much, but what was that during the goblin in encounter and you yelling about your husband or your ex? Kind of looks on down to Crumble Dumble. Here we go. Oh, yeah, that was, um... That was my ex-boyfriend. We dated years ago. Before he decided to go tribal. Oh, okay. I'm guessing one of the ones that we actually killed. Oh, the one I had my hands around. Mm. I gave him the best three months of his life, and then he was like, I'm heading out into the wild, baby, to start my own corporation. And like, you couldn't start a corporation if it came and bit you in the butt. And he's like, that's not how corporations work. <laughs> and then he was tribal. As you do. I guess it didn't really work out for him after all. I'm kind of shocked. I mean, I, I figured he would have been eaten, like, sooner. He wasn't the brightest. Am I going to be the first one to point out that the idea of going tribal and starting a, cor a corporation seems completely backwards? Crumble just kind of shrugs. Goblin economics? Ugh. Step one, underpants. Step three, profit. <laughs> hey, there's good money in underpants. Be surprised. <laughs> All right. I'm going to say... An hour passes on by. I want people to start rolling me some fortitude saves. I want to see how well you guys handle Woo. your alcohol. Oh, Do I Lord. get anything uh, with, if, since I'm drinking it with water? No. That's for the next morning. Four to two. Yeah. Oh. Irish blood coming in. Uh, eh, oh my god. <laughs> Jet. Let's see how that badly I do. <laughs> Nine. <laughs> and what is Never so slightly better. Never? Oh, Neville doesn't drink. Oh, did Neville go with him? No, he just doesn't drink. Oh, okay. Um, in which case, he's having oh, surely temples. <laughs> okay, then yeah, they'll they'll probably be handing you off like a soda pop or something. So, all right, Alex, Jack, and Ivan. God dang, Curtin, you're fine. You've you. Like this this is the drink that kept you warm on the fronts. Mm -hmm. Like you're used to this. Alex, Jack, and Ivan. Okay, Ooh. this is um 
Well, this is a little more powerful than you remember. And Jack with that That's my name. Sorry, I'm let me see how Dr. Nothing Winston's like doing. going to drive with being in jail or like, oh, however long we were there. <laughs> <laughs> Jack just like leaning on the bar, just continuing to drink quietly. Did you actually say that? Yep. <laughs> you see, I rolled to see how Lindsman is doing. She's kind of like. She's got her, like, she looks like she's kind of, like, dozing off, but the moment you say that, she raises up her glass to you. It was just like, you, 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 like, clink glasses. Clink glasses. Clink. 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 To breaking out of jail. Yeah, not the dying. <laughs> Shrugs and raises his glass. <laughs> glass raises glass. How is the other person doing? To the ton of paperwork I'm going to have to do when I get back. Paperwork. So I know Lindsman was with us, but wasn't someone else with us? Um, you did. You guys asked Crumble, but I I forgot she's supposed to be back at the hotel because she's a student, not supposed to be with you. Ow. Rip. Did anyone else see my student here? Oh uh, god, what is uh, this? I, 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 I don't know what the hell you're going on about. We see here. Crumble Butt in a, in a mustache. She's <sighs> probably fine, don't worry about it. Yeah. Alright. Just hey. all those rebellious teenagers slash hey. young adults. Hey, Ivan. Yes? Have you ever almost died? Yes, I, com I got electrocuted shorting out the elevator. Oh, uh, yeah. Remember well, that's how I got this? Shows his scarred hand. Yeah. Yeah, that was kind of dumb, though. Like, that would have been really, really disappointing if that's how you died. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but at least I got a really cool lightning power after it. Well, that's, that's not how you get powers. What do you call this? He fires the electric, bl the static blast. Oh. She falls out oh, of God. her chair. <laughs> 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 All right. Roll to attack. Drunk. Roll to attack, Ivan. <laughs> the only small bar that this town has, and you're trying to get us thrown out of it the first day we're here. Oh boy. If you want the fast okay. way to get my character to disassociate with the party, that's it. Let me see here. What were you aiming at? <laughs> my face. <laughs> I mean, he I was showing even, me the scar. <laughs> I guess uh, not at, uh, I wouldn't be aiming at Alex, but you know what? I'm going to roll a d8. One is north, two is northeast. And I'm just going to go left from up. up. All right. Roll me that d8. Oh dear God! Rolling it four, uh, so that be north, northeast, east, south, uh, south, east, south. Or no, that would be southeast. Southeast. All right. Da, 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 da. Aiming southeast. Hit the okay. player piano in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> Not big enough for that. Let me see here. You end up shooting towards, like, a table that looked like somebody was eating at, but then vacated. You end up zapping the silverware. 
electric sparks just dance across the surface of it. You hear the bartender go, Hey! Hey! <laughs> I still fall out of my chair. You all, you all only had a couple of drinks. <laughs> and my accent. Am I right? <laughs> Breaking character in five seconds. <laughs> all right. Whoa, the one shoots anybody. <laughs> That's because you haven't had enough drinks in you just yet. One more, one more round. It's like, n- no. <laughs> it's like, I gave I, you. I, I, I want, I want dollar. another. All right. I, I another, want another. Another hour goes by. Roll me those fortitude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my god, Jack, please. Woo! <laughs> uh, her. Instant sobriety. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, good. not bad. God. You're not getting any worse, that means. Alright. <laughs> Alex, I when you f- picked up Ivan's water. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, when you fell out of your chair and you hit the ground, you ended up hitting your head and you get up and you're like, ah, ah oh, there goes my buzz. Oh, <laughs> oh rip. <laughs> uh, fuck him. Unless you, can you choose to fail a fortitude to <laughs> You can if you still chose to. Yeah, you can choose. All right. Here we go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you got Jack, you still you still feeling pretty buzzed. S- Curtin, you're f- you're fine. Ivan, you are no more buzzed than you were like a few seconds ago or like an hour ago. Okay, 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 but okay. How many of us have almost died? Like like she just starts pointing up and down Let's the line. Let's see. There was there was it's me. You already went. Counting on fingers, still drunk. Holds up a, a, a hand, all showing all five fingers. This many. Is that, is that like you personally, or like all five of us? I, I mean, me I mean not not being in a life-threatening situation, but like like actually almost dying, not just like. Like being in a situation where you could have died. Doctor Lizman I mean, raises a f- raises one finger. Then, okay. Doctor Lizman raises up three. Whoa, Doctor Lizman! <laughs> you are badass. badass. <laughs> I raise up eight. Um, okay, man, show I off. think. <laughs> okay, okay, Dr. Linsman is badass. I think you're just, like, accident prone. <laughs> <laughs> Most of them were in sky. Including the bus ride out of prison, he'd hold up four. Two from battles. The third one is from a failed assassination attempt. Well, Most of those were during sky fights. <laughs> okay, no, no, no. If it's, like... It- I'm not saying situations where you could have almost died. I mean, like, you're laying, bleeding on the floor, your life leaving your body. Oh. 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 Her uh, fingers go down. Yeah, if you're in a plane, then sure, some shit happens to your plane. Anytime. Like, anytime. Uh, Three. Okay, that makes that that's that's less bad. <laughs> Two of those times were during college. What? <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Not gonna question it. Uh, I've I've only got like like one, I guess, like once. Pauses to think. Holds up and two fingers. Have a story with it. Uh. uh when? Oh, you're asking her. I mean, I mean, yeah, I, I got the blown up. <laughs> it is, it, it, it's like fucked me up, like really bad. And then, 
And then I woke up. And then I got arrested. And then I met you guys! University was very fun. Uh, any of you ever went to so heard of Salamanta? No. Nope. Oh, you should see the fountains there. A beautiful shade of red water. Okay, fish boy. <laughs> uh. Nevo, since you're the only person who's sober, I'll let you roll an Arcana check. Tom. Thomas? Uh, what's happened? <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure I need you, Arcana? I, I need, I need you paying attention, bud. I, went, I should have wrote, be right back. I went away. Sorry. Oh, okay. Uh, they're all talk drunkenly talking about the times they've almost died. Uh, Ivan brings up the name Salamanta. I was going to have you roll an Arcana check to see if you recognize that. Uh, oh god, where is Arcana? Oh. Four. Nah, dude, you're too busy with your water and your soda. You're you're trying to fish the cherry out of the bottom of your Shirley Temple with your straw. <laughs> <laughs> that makes a lot of sense, actually. Yeah, yeah, that shit is a logic puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> Carton, Carton. Yes, now that I'm back. <laughs> Carton, what what happened? Who are you trying to assassinate? What happened? A very important individual who was on the other side of the war. Yeah, okay, but like, but like, what happened? Hmm. Huh. Yeah, I guess he'll reveal the entire story. Especially Fuck considering yeah. that now people are drunk enough. So he will actually state that, um, fighting against, what was the other side, Storm? The Red Leaf. Fight against the Red Leaf in the war. He was part of a guerrilla um, coalition force. Um, he was tasked to take with assassinating the um, the leader. Had the perfect shot. Just for some reason, this is the one that got away. He was chased down by guards. They eventually figured out his initial identity, which was. Uh, Adran Omen, which is his real name, instead of Curtin Pavlovich. He assumed that identity after needing to flee the country. Oh. So your real name is Pavlovich? Cody. Adran Omen. Can you spell that? Cody. <laughs> no, I'll just take off the thing on my... There, I can quickly type it out. Please and thank. Yee. Thank and please. Oh no, it's just the... It's the first name that comes up. The one that's not in parentheses. Gotcha. Pavlich. Ah, that one. Mm-hmm. Alright. Now that he sees that he's been around this crew long enough that he doesn't view you as... You know, people who are trying to find him, which he still has suspicions that people are, but you never know. Wow, that is, like, so crazy. Speaking of guerrilla warfare, uh, Dr. Lensman pipes in, did you know they can, like, lift you above their head and rip you in half? <laughs> <laughs> Gorillas? Yeah. They are quite Have strong. Have you ever seen a gorilla? Uh, yeah. That's fucked up. Yeah. Hey, uh, uh, Professor. Yeah. Have you heard of College Solomanta? Let me mm -hmm. see here. Just gonna roll that with. 
Clearly you've heard the school motto, right? Uh... If furnace this... Descendo ascende cognito. Huh? Is any of that English? Here, I'll write. Wait. I'll write Wait. down. Wait. It's, it's Wait. Latin. Wait. 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 And she starts to poke you in the chest, Ivan. <laughs> mm-hmm. Did my college kick your college's ass at football? <laughs> what was college's name again? Wait. 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 She looks down at your drink, takes a drink of your drink, and goes back to looking at you. Depends. Did you... Did you fight the Avern... Or, uh, Solamenta Hellhounds? Maybe. Uh, why do I feel like Dr. Linson's about to have, like, a galaxy brain play in, like, five seconds? Doctor, Doctor Linvan, Doctor Linvan. Yes, Dr. Ivan. Linsman. Yes, Ivan. No, I'm Alex. I'm not Ivan. Yes, you are. You yeah. are Alex. How? How did? How, what did? Did you do something before you were a professor? Like, how did you? Did you almost die that many times? Oh, okay, okay. So one of the first times I, I hired Justice Fist, we went out into the woods and we were nearly eaten by carnivorous deer. Whoa. Excuse me? <laughs> They're like deer, but they eat people. I understand that, but how? Do they have, With their like, fangs. Fangs? Oh With my god! Oh, there was so much blood. They just. Did they eat anybody? Oh, oh, I mean, beforehand they did. They come on up to us and they're like, oh, hey, it's a deer, but it's covered in blood. Also, it's carrying a corpse behind it. And then we're like, that's not a deer. Wait, wait, wait. Was, was this at the same place where we were just camping? No. Okay. Wait, I just this, realized this was like during Sorry. the war. Wow. Wait, were you always a professor? I, I mean, yeah. Like, like you just went straight from being a student into being a professor? I... Oh, God, I can't remember my college days. No, wait, I remember my husband. <gasps> you have a yeah. husband? Huh? Do you not have a husband anymore? What happened I to have... your husband? He's, he's over in the next state over taking care of grandbabies. Oh, that's Aww. so cute. <laughs> Fat grandbaby. Oh. oh. So cute. Chunky baby. <laughs> did you meet him when you were in college? I did. <laughs> and he had a hot piece of ass while he was working with a Bunsen burner. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh my. Did he romance you or did that, you romance him? That man could handle a culture like you would not believe. <laughs> mm. She takes one of your drinks and downs it. Oh. Uh, more, more, All right. more food. I'm not drunk enough for this shit. One more roll of fortitudes. Well, Quick then question. drink more. Uh, hey, my boy. Woo. Quick question on the game. Yes. So I just realized something. My turtle has an, has an empathetic link with me. Yes. What does that mean when I'm drunk? It just hears the drunken gar- It just feels the drunken garble in your head. It's still sober. So is it- I was about to ask, is it secondhand drunk? No, it just- It just realizes, oh shoot, my master is- Is getting tipsy. <laughs> and need one from Ivan. Rolling. Oh no! <laughs> Ivan is unconscious. He's out. <laughs> Why do I imagine he just static blasts himself? <laughs> okay, hold on. I have the best thing for that happens to Ivan. 
All right, Alex, you are you are seeing doubles at this moment. Jack and Curtin, you guys are fine. Ivan, what I'm happens to you? The whole time. Ivan, what happens to me? Yeah. Flop. You take one drink, and you hit the counter. And Dr. Lensman looks over at you. Oh, that's nothing. And she hits the counter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fucking great. Jack just sipping his hard whiskey. The bartender just shakes his head. I'm, I'm, I'm done with you guys. Get on out of here. Oh god, my accent! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 this is really <laughs> This wow. guy is now the, the multilingual bartender. I love this man. Man, Can you we are like him? so well traveled. <laughs> Can we change him to whatever the Kenku race in oh. this is and call him Duolingo? Mm, let me hold on, I gotta get that <laughs> Aussie that Aussie accent down there. There we go. Sorry about the need to get my pills. Oh, I'm done serving you guys for the night. Get on out of here. I have a wow. head of heart we can borrow. I'll carry the woman. But you're big and strong, Garden. You can carry Ivan. <laughs> Honestly, knowing knowing Ivan, he's probably lighter than the woman. You have, like, muscles. And she flexes really clumsily. <laughs> I'm more concerned about having to carry both him and you. I'm fine. I can walk. Mm-hmm. Then try standing. Um, Jack says, looking at you from a side glance. I narrow my eyes at you. Well, maybe I will just turn into smoke and then go inside of you and then you can walk me home. <laughs> Waiting for a drunk kiss from her. Oh, no. Here we go again. Uh -huh. <laughs> How would you like that, Mr. 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 Horny? And I poke Jack <laughs> in the forehead. Blank, blank. I am not drunk enough for this shit. Well, Shame. you can have some of mine. And I slide over with the dregs of my glass. <laughs> and I get up. <laughs> <laughs> Looks at the drink. Eh, it's a waste. Dr drinks it. <laughs> All right. Oh, I I'll throw pick Ivan up Doctor Linsman. I throw Ivan over one shoulder. Hoist Alex on the other shoulder. Oh no! I can walk. And we go back to the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> this is dumb. I could totally walk myself. <laughs> yes, yes, you can, Alex. Jack, Nevo, do either of you carry uh, Dr. Linsman? I already said I was going to carry her. Okay. Yeah, she's light. She's an old woman. Okay. Picks her up. Like, I to... hmm, trying I to need... think. I need to figure out who I'm going to spoon tonight. Kawaii. <laughs> <laughs> if we've only got double beds in there, okay? <laughs> All right, well. <laughs> you guys stumble your way on back to the hotel. I'll just spoon Dr. Lindsman. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I just <laughs> drunkenly sing. Uh, rush or or uh, Atlan national anthems. Uh, while I'm passed out. No, Atlan drinking songs. What do you do with a drunken that one? What do you do with a drunken that one? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, because they're ashamed to their family. <laughs> oh, no, wait. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys get on back. I'm guessing you toss uh, the drunkards into their bed. Oh, absolutely. All right. Yeah, I'll, I'll lace Dr. Lindsman on a freaking bed. Okay, what happens to Baxter when he just when when he's just tossed on? Uh, Baxter kind of crawls on out. It's a sturdy bed. It's not going to crush him. Um, but as Curtin kind of dumps you on into bed, Baxter just kind of crawls out, looks at you, pulls up the covers, and puts uh, your turtle underneath your head like a pillow. 
<laughs> gives, you, gives you a kiss on the forehead and slinks back under the bed. <laughs> and this goblin Goodness. is definitely trying to earn an extra burden. <laughs> we don't have goblin po- We don't have brownie points. We have goblin points. <laughs> we have exactly. greenie points. A second bird. Be gentle, we're ladies. Remember, Curtin, the first rule of goblinomics. Suck up. <laughs> I thought it was underwear, but okay. They're all first rules in goblinomics are first rules, because we do not no, have that's, pathetic second rules. That's, that's point five rule is underwear. I know, third step profit. Goblinomics has no second rate rules. And he slinks back under the bed. All right. We will take a quick bio break here. I will. Quick, when we wake up, we need to steal the shampoo. Mm-hmm. We need to steal oh, all yeah. the towels and shampoo. All right. <sighs> Who steals the towels? Just the soap and the shampoo. I've met people who steal towels. Dude, that's all. Yeah, my dad probably would do that. <laughs> He's stolen silverware. Oof. How the f- Okay, that makes sense, because it's small and lightweight, but it's like, why? Because he's a cheapskate. Okay, fair enough. I'm cheap, but I'm not that cheap. Hell, I knew somebody who- I knew somebody on a school trip who actually stole a pillow from a hotel. I mean- those you know really the spare pillows? pillows that they usually give you Damn. in the, You know the spare pillows that they usually give you in like the uh the closets? Uh-huh. He took one of those. Huh. Gotcha. There we go. Okay. I'm back. Hi. Alright. Let me see those hands up for everyone who's ready to go. Yeah, I'm good. There. Is there mm. dates? Uh, so what? dates? Yeah. I have a calendar on here. Yeah, oh. it's under uh, player resources. Here we go. Or what world resources for players. Duh, 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 duh. So it is. What was yesterday where we got drunk? Yesterday was. Let me bring it up real quick. Um. There are 13 months in this uh, yep. world. It is the oh. Atlan calendar. Every month is 28 days with one extra day at the end. I mean, it oh. could be worse. This could be the uh, French Revolution calendar. So today is... You guys spent seven. So yesterday, month 10. And it was uh, the 8th. Any special holidays coming up? Uh, none that I'm aware of. So now it's the ninth of month ten? Yes. Here we go. Tom, you ready to go? <clears throat> okay. Alright, morning roll comes on by. The sound of a rooster off in the distance greets the morning sun. And uh, there we go. Okay, so he's putting up the date. And dates might be a little flexible here and there. I, I, wake, I wake up and stretch looking out for cicadas. Roll me that perception. I don't know. It's begun. The invasion of the cicada monsters. One perception coming up. I'm waiting for there to be an art of cicada cultist. Charm. Trying to yes. roll. It's How's the weather? Just taking a bit. Oh, uh, it is sunny. Hot. That's a little warm. How was yesterday? 
Uh, yesterday was actually pretty pleasant. There was a warm, there was a light breeze blowing on through. All right, Ivan, you take a quick peek around. No cicadas. Mm. Oh, thank God. Uh, I head downstairs to go to the washroom. Okay, there's actually a washroom right next to your, uh, right on the second floor. You see where this kind of disheveled room is off to the side here that my little ring is binging? Imagine that okay. is actually a bathroom. Uh, it's divided okay, in the middle. The restroom. Okay. All right, you guys begin the stir. Um, Alex, you wake up in a bed with Dr. Lindsman. Um, yep. And she's just kind of, she's already awake and staring at you with this, like, perplexed look of, oh my god, what are you doing? <laughs> what yeah. happened? Uh, what, are you, uh, what are you looking at? How about is our hangover? Uh, as bad as yours, but... Ivan, yours is bad. Alex? <laughs> Even with all the water I drink. Yeah. You rolled a nat one. Yeah. Alex, yours... You, you, you got a stinger in your head. You, or, sorry, not a... <laughs> metaphor. Metaphor. Yeah, I gotcha. Uh, what are you looking at me like that for? Is it breathing on uh, you? Uh, I turned a shower on the coldest water it has. You get blasted by icy cold water. Oh god! Why Great are you giving me that look? Why are you snuggling with me? Because there's only two double beds. Fair enough. And you see her kind of like roll on out of bed, just rubbing your forehead. I didn't want to spoon one of your students in that kind of state. <laughs> <laughs> that felt more inappropriate than spooning you. <laughs> uh, uh, don't, don't say spoon. Only my husband's okay. allowed to say spoon. Sorry. Uh, Coffee. I need coffee. Coffee. Yeah, coffee. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, at least she didn't fork you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're going to head into the morning planning phase, just like what we did with last week. You guys will My decide. My plans are coffee. All right. You guys head on down to first floor kind of like dining area they serve you breakfast uh, coffee included hey guys and you guys will plan Actually, on what you're going to do for today that raises a question are Atlans warm blooded or cold blooded uh, da, 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 they are warm blooded okay so yeah Ivy is shivering a bit after the cold shower that being that being said, you are not like too terribly bothered by cold water, because Atlans can live in Arctic oceans. Admittedly, those ones are a little hardier. So we've got snakes or chupacabras. I am not. And one you of those. still need to talk to. Well, I am from like Russian territory. Is it is it Jehoshaphat or Jehoshaphat? Jehoshaphat, but yes. Hey, you need to still talk to Jehoshaphat about about the bullet. Uh, so it's either snakes or chupacabras today. I don't know about you guys, but I'm feeling like snakes are more my speed right now. Mm. Dr. Lensman kind of rubs her eyes. I managed to have... Managed to get some information on where we might be able to find Jehoshaphat. Um, wasn't able to meet with him in person, but they did tell me where I could possibly meet up with him, have a chat, get his side Love of the story. That name. How many days do we want to stay in the area? Or at least until it's done? We had a week. We have ten days is what I agreed upon with the university that give us time to get pretty much any samples that we needed. Mostly it's that long um, or staying that period 
in the event that we do tackle the Balete. Just so we don't go rushing into it. They are incredibly dangerous creatures, capable of burrowing through the soil and have an appetite like a shark. The rip up train tracks for fun. Yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely feeling like snakes are more my speed today. <laughs> I don't mind checking out the area for bullet. We can't do that until she talks to Jehoshaphat. Oh, oh, never mind, never mind. I... I could check area for Jupacabra. Just check area. Okay. Uh, yeah, I can help with the Chupacabra. Yeah. Chupacabra. Let me bring up my dog. Fuck you guys, I'm doing snakes. Well, I was about to say, do we, does Neva want to help you out with the snakes, just so that we're divided sure. evenly? Yeah, uh, Neva. How, we're snake bros. How big are the two propers? Um, roll me... Like really dog, oh, right? I mean, you are... You saw them, right? Roll me a knowledge of nature. Nature check coming up. You were there when they chased oh, that you. guy. Hey, over. Ivan, as you try to like think to yourself, oh my god, like what is their normal size? You just have this splitting hangover. Can yeah. I try to uh, gesture you know, from memory? It might be better if I don't do anything today. If you want, I'm gonna see if I can meet up with Jehoshaphat. Uh, you can accompany on, me on that if you'd like. Sure, sure. Uh, could I just stop at one place all right quick? Where at? General store. <laughs> Need some IP Pro. Uh, actually, I think I have some IP Pro. That's yeah, right. <laughs> he's got IP Pro on him. Yeah, I have. I'll take an aspirin, but also I. I will take a, uh, but no, I was planning to buy, like, sunglasses or something, because hangover sunlight, not great. As long as we so, can talk to Jehoshaphat first. Actually, actually, you know what? Uh, I will offer... Wait, don't you have goggles? Uh, yes, I do, but they're aviation goggles. They're not, like, sunglasses. Ugh. Pretty sure those reduce glare, but whatever. Mm -hmm. Uh, I will actually pull out the bottle of aspirin and ask if anybody wants them. I only have three. Yeah, that feels like a good thing to have to do. All right, <clears throat> you guys, take some aspirin with your morning breakfast. Yeah, I'll pop it open, hand out three to anybody who wants it. Okay. Okay, I'll have another cigarette. Make me feel better. So, That's so far that, that I have one left if uh, the professor doesn't want it. I'm good. I'm good. But, yeah, I'll still go to the store to get, like, some extra aspirin in case. She shrugs. Fuck. All right, so... Mm. Do I lose my hangover, or... Um, uh, I'll say your headache. Yeah, your headache will subside. Yay. Do, do, Caffeine do, do, do. and aspirin. All right. So, as a double check, who was heading out uh, to do the snakes? That was Alex. Me and Nevo. And Nevo. And then Jack and Curtin were doing chupas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Alex and Nevo, you guys end up going out with, uh, Dylan and, um, and what was her name? The Nefine. Astrid Salem. Astrid. There we go. Astrid. Um, they end up bringing some little vials that have, um, like these rubber, these thin rubber tops on them. 
and they basically give you guys a quick courser on how to milk a snake. Um, basically, you need to hold behind the jaws so that way its mouth opens up, and you gotta stick the fangs into like the rubber part, and it'll start injecting the vials with uh, with its venom. Okay, but like, like what are like like we catch them and then we can like give them to you, right? Do you have any like snake catching tools? Let me bring it up. Um, you see, Dylan just—he's kind of holding on to like a thick pair of like leather gloves. Really? That's it. I mean. We only get, like, so much money. Let me okay. grab... Da, 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 da. Let me bring up the documents, the contract that has the list of stuff. Um, netting cage, shovel saw, uh, rope twine, wires... Uh, the syringe spear will not work for that. Yeah, I'll be for the chupacabras later. There we go. Okay, so yeah, all he really has is just these, um, thick pair of gloves. I search for a stick. Alright, yeah, they're easy enough to find. I find a big stick, and I'm gonna start turning over rocks with it, I guess. Okay. Uh, you guys are going to roll survival. Let's see if you can find them snickers snickers. Survival. Not good. I just realized I have that I still have Calvin's watch. Oh never. There we go. Oh nice. Alright. That's one, two. Alright, so never. During an eight-hour period, Alex, you managed to catch two of them. Ooh, I turn over rocks, and then I smush the stick down on their necks so they can't move like a crocodile hunter. It looks like this place is plentiful in rattlesnakes. Oh, boy. Do that twisty thing that where they don't like their head being touched. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't like this, I don't like this, I don't like this, I don't like this, I say as I hold one by the neck. <laughs> snakes. Why did it have to be snakes? Because their anti-venom is very valuable. Alright, so as you are holding it, uh, Dylan comes on over, and he places its head against the, uh, the rubber medium, and it just starts injecting just copious amounts of venom into this glass vial. Its fangs come out so far, I don't like it! Here we go. But, the more venom and the more venom we're able to collect, the more anti-venom we're able to make. These will go towards a very good cause with the hospitals. Yes. And, Nevo, you actually managed to find three of them. Keep track of how many snakes that you find. Can your dog find any? Oh, yeah. Go ahead and uh, roll for uh, Buddy Bonesley. Okay. Da, 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 da. Oh. All right. <laughs> Bad news. Buddy gets Keep bitten it. right on the face. Oh. Good right news is. Stone. <laughs> good news is, Buddy is undead, so therefore he is not affected by the venom. So just as a note, if you roll a nat one while out collecting snakes, you have to save against their venom, as you are bitten. Never. So you see this thing as Buddy is kind of like digging around, just kind of moping around being a dog. Um, you hear this rattling and Neva, as you kind of look on over to where Buddy is, you see this rattlesnake just fling itself forward and smack against Buddy's face. Buddy just doesn't seem phased by it. <laughs> 
it just kind of uh, starts like attacking his face and he's just like oh a danger noodle and it's like <laughs> you see like the venom like dripping down buddy's face and buddy just doesn't really care he's like oh it's spitting on me <laughs> it likes me too <laughs> I'll just take my sword and then use the budding end, like the hilt, I guess it's called, I think, right? Yeah. And okay. then just, like, poke it, to the, poke the snake off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It kind of falls on over and Buddy just kind of looks up and he's like, oh, hey, Daddy, I made a friend. And <laughs> hey, uh, Yeah. How did you, like, get into Bones? Oh. <laughs> uh. Um. Hmm. That's a story and a half. <laughs> yeah, I've just sort of noticed the, like, uh, sort of... The Bones theme and, and the interest in Bones and, I mean... I haven't seen a lot of people who are that into Bones. And you've got, like, a bone dog. And, uh, I mean, you don't talk a lot, so you're kind of mysterious. I'm just sort of curious, and we're just sort of out here turning over rocks, so... Well, it wasn't always that way. Yeah? Yeah, I, uh... It actually kind of happened pretty quickly, all things considered. Yeah? Like, you found some really cool bones and you decided to be into them, or...? Uh... uh, Kind of, he nervously says. I'm starting to think this is like a sad story. (laughs) Yeah... Okay. I mean, you don't have to tell me. I just... I just was sort of curious, I get I, I guess. I haven't really seen a lot of... A lot of people who could do these sorts of things, and I gesture at your dog. <laughs> I mean, I haven't seen a lot of things, to be honest, but, uh... It's just interesting. I mean... Before, I think I have just would have been, like... Chilling it and stuff. Just doing whatever. Yeah, before? Yeah. But then, uh, the sad stuff happened. Right. So, uh, so what was before, like? Oh, you know, I would just, like, sort of hang around outside and try to have friends, like, Normal, I guess. Yeah, like normal? Like, uh... Like where? Where did you grow up? Did you, like, go to school? I actually don't know where Neville was originally from, outside of character. (laughs) (laughs) We never really settled on a place for you. Yeah. (laughs) Is he from the suburbs, or...? I don't know if that really narrows it down. (laughs) I'll tell you what, make something up for now, and we'll see if we can get it fit in. He lives yeah. in the middle of nowhere with it, with his <laughs> grandmother Muriel and her husband used this bag. Well, <laughs> you see, I live in a pineapple under the sea. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't really know how how a lot of Atlants grow up or. Uh... I thought he lived in a Tiki Island house. <laughs> he has, uh, some pretty interesting streets, I guess. Yeah. I mean, a not lot a lot happened where I was from. Uh. <laughs> well, that's probably for the best. Well, that is until, again, that thing happened. Yeah. 
keep mentioning it. I'm not, I'm not sure if you want to talk about it or... Uh... I mean, I guess it'd probably be better just to tell everyone at some point. Well, you can practice on me if you want. Well, one day when I was just sort of hanging around as I usually did, uh, came back home and uh, my uh, parents weren't alive anymore. And uh, yeah, I almost saw the attackers and I tried to go after them, but I didn't really get a good look at them or anything. And after they passed, I just... I was so desperate, I just tried everything, and then I just started to try to bring them back, you know? And, uh, that's when I was taken away and arrested. Ah. Uh. Wow, oh, I'm... I'm sorry, but... That sounds really rough. So... So you just learned magic to try to do that? Yeah, it kind of, like I said, it kind of happened pretty quickly. Huh. Did you, did you know magic before that happened? Hmm. I don't think so. Huh. Unless, like, magic's, like, clean or something? I don't know. Man, me neither. I don't know fuck shit about magic. You seem pretty good at it now. Yeah. Buddy's the best thing I've got going for me right now. He's a very good stupid dog, bruh. <laughs> That's a word. Well, he's made That's out of chupid <laughs> copper bones. <laughs> uh... Oh, so that's do you a nice like... dog. What type of breed is it? Chupacabra. Chupacabra. Do you... Do you, like, still want to try to... Like, bring your parents back? Uh... From what I can understand, I think it only can help so far long away. I think. So like, after like... a while, it just doesn't work anymore, you know? Oh, so it's like too late, I guess. Yeah. Ah. Huh. Sorry, man, that sucks. Right. So, for the rest of day, you guys spend your time collecting snakes and snake venom. Is there anything else you guys want to talk about? Before I move on over to Jack and Curtain. I think I've tried enough for one day. Alright. And uh, Kit, I'll get back to you on the cost of a bottle of aspirin. Put, uh, let's put a pin in that for now. Okay. Uh, Alright. Jack and Curtain, I'll have you guys roll uh, survival, perception, knowledge of nature, whatever you can use to track something down. Stat is of that particular group. Uh, give me a hot second. Uh, oh, hot let's second. see. Uh, my nature's garbage. Perception is probably gonna be my. Uh, survival's a zero, so yeah, perception's gonna be my. Uh, yeah. Hey. Hey. I need these kind of rolls in combat for fuck's sake. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you guys load on into the justice cut to uh, the Typhon, and you guys end up heading a little deeper out into the wilderness than what Alex and uh, Neva went. Let me see here. You guys end up going onto the grasslands, and with the help of. Uh, Salem, 
who's with you, who's using his expertise as a big game hunter. Nice. All right. Um, brings a pair of binoculars with him. He takes you guys out to a rather, like, sparse plains area. Um, you see a couple of deer kind of milling about here and there. He ends... You guys end up finding... Small herd of them. Now, here's the thing. You guys remember the chupacabras from out in uh, St. Morticia's. Those things were beefy. They were like the size of, like, a wolf. They were big, beefy creatures. These things that you're seeing mulling around out here, they're like the size of maybe a little bigger than a house cat. Yeah. Oh, so these guys are tiny. They're supposed like to be like a bobcat. Pretty much, yeah, about the size of a bobcat. <laughs> okay. So, still pretty small, but intimidating in their own way. Mm hmm. There they are. Yeah, I had an idea what I was going to do when I, if I came with you guys. Not too fearsome looking until they get into. Until they. Oh, wait, I need to do the Nigel voice. Mm hmm. Not too bad. No. Yeah, not too bad until they get into a pack, and they start to drink you dry like a wine bottle. Smash them off one by one. Still not as bad as the uh, in a plains trooper cobras. Those things get to be quite beastly. Mm. Ever seen a picture of them by chance? Size of a great beast, one of them alone is more than enough for a full-grown man. I can turn him into a piece of jerky in under a minute. Oh, we've had more close encounters with them than we would like. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Ain't that the truth? I believe... Thankfully, these ones are just your garden-variety chupa. Shouldn't be too hard to capture. Set out a couple of cages. Set out ah, some yes, bait. Ah, oh, yes, they're just chupas, not cobras yet. Hmm. Mm. We also have a few bear traps we can throw out. Non-lethal, mind you. Merely snags their leg. <laughs> Get a blood... Oh, oh, my headphones. Oh, God, my headphones have fallen out, dear. There we go. <laughs> Smashing. 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 Oh. <laughs> well, that's the game plan right there. We'll get them back. We won't get them back. Sorry. Old habit there. Trying to break. Uh -huh. We'll get them tagged. We'll get blood samples. Get them put on ice for the university. Sounds like a plan. And... Possibly. Get some of their spittle while we're at it. Did you know that their spit actually contains an anticoagulant? <laughs> Makes for great. Raises an eyebrow, not understanding that word. <laughs> it keeps the blood flowing, keeps it from clotting once they bite into you. A lot like a vampire bat. Medical universities have been using their spit to help uh, with their patients. They might be developing blood clots. Interesting. Neat. All right. So with those rolls, you guys now know where to look for them. Yeet. All right. So, yeah, that'll be your eight hours. You guys are basically... Uh, Salem gives you kind of a rundown on them. They're quick. They're agile. If they bite into you, then that... It's going to hurt like a bitch. It hurts like a bitch, and it empowers the chupacabra. Um, there are rare varieties that can grow wings. Um, yeah, those ones are incredibly rare, though. And the ones that you guys oh, no. have met at St. Morticia's are a sub-variety of them. Um, possibly gotten to large size either through, um, either through just an incredibly healthy diet over the generations or some genetic defect that resulted in gigantism among uh, that Aren't particular you? group. Honestly, my guess is, like, they may have gotten big from the anti-magic substance that they were using in the water, possibly 
because that thing has to put out some sort of radiation. Perhaps. Yeah, let theories see. be it's theories. A theory. A game theory. Okay. <laughs> An RPG. Gotcha. All right. Sorry, this this and is culture be, shock. And that'll be your guys' eight hour. All right. Uh, Dr. Lindsman and Ivan. All right. Dr. Lindsman takes you on down to a, uh, sort of a shack on the edge of town. And let me bring up... Da, 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 da. I would actually ask Lindsman, uh, so what is this Jehoshaphat supposed to look like? Or uh, be like? Well, like I said, I didn't get a chance to meet him in person, uh, from what I was able to get, though. Uh, he is the... Uh, he was a lumberjack, and it looks like right now he's one of the head members of this town's Department of Agricultural Redevelopment. Neat. She just kind of looks on over to you and shrugs. Alright. And... As you guys kind of wander on over, uh, like I said, it's a small cabin. It's smaller than your hotel. Um, she knocks on the door. No answer. Um, excuse me, Mr. Jehoshaphat? Still no answer. I'll peek into the windows. All right. You peek on in. Um... It's kind of sparsely decorated. You see uh, what looks like a regional map. Uh, there's a bunch of charts kind of hanging up on the wall. It looks like uh, foresting maps. And there is a table in the middle of the room. And you see like one of those little uh, little dingers on front of the ones where you just slap it down. Bing! And most curious of all, right behind this table is what looks like a large, like, sound funnel leading out a window with one end pointing towards the, uh, the bell and the other end pointing out a window. Oh, interesting. Uh, so wait, there's a bell outside or? Inside. In the middle of this room, there's a table. On the uh. table is this little slap bell and facing, um... Uh, the bell is this like megaphone almost, and the other end of the megaphone is aiming outside a window. Hmm. Uh, I'm gonna actually go to the door and see if it's locked. It is unlocked. Oh. Uh, I guess we should head inside. Kind of cocks her head to the side, and you guys make your way on in. I'll head over to the bell because I'm curious about that. Okay. I'm gonna, gonna give it a ding. Alright. You go, you slap. You hear the ding in the room. And from out the other side of this megaphone, or this loud... Yeah, this uh, megaphone, you just hear it echo off into the distance towards a forest. Um, out, out back of the cabin. And you see a little sign on there. Uh, that just says, ring bell, please wait for assistance. <laughs> and you guys... While we're, while we're waiting, uh, I will look at the map and kind of figure out what they mean. Okay. Uh, roll knowledge of nature. Knowledge of nature coming up. Ba -ba -ba -ba. That's nature. 25. Uh, there are a series of, like, forestry maps right along the wall, and it looks like they are marking the growth of where trees are cut down, where new trees are planted, and where still developing forests are. Mm. It looks like this is an agricult like a like an agricultural map to help maintain, like, forests and stuff like that. Okay. And and as you are kind of sitting there, both both you and Dr. Lindsman are kind of checking out the maps there, just seeing what this room is all about, you begin to feel a rumbling underneath your feet. Uh, I look towards where the rumbling is coming from. All right. Roll me a perception. Let's see if you can find out. 
Oh boy. I'm historically bad at these. Nine. Yep. Dr. Uh, no. You and Dr. Linsman just kind of look over at each other as a steadily rumbling just starts Is to get... Is there supposed to be earthquakes in this area? Ah, it's not working on my desk. Damn. Confusion. She kind of looks on a no. We're a little far inland for that. The rumbling gets louder. Coming from outside. I'll look towards outside where it's coming from. Take a peek out the window. And you see the trees off in the forest behind this cabin swaying and shifting side to side. Oh no. As if something big is wandering on through. These are mm. massive trees, too. Yep. Can I roll anything to see if I notice anything moving the trees? I'll have to roll one more perception check. Ten. Ten? It is dense. You cannot see a thing, but whatever it is, it is coming fast. Mm -hmm. And it's getting louder and louder and louder. Uh, I'm gonna try something. Okay. So where the bell is, you said that there's also a megaphone. Yeah. Connection. I imagine it's like a megaphone, a tube megaphone. Uh, it's like one large megaphone aiming at an open window. Okay. I guess I'll yell. <laughs> I'm gonna actually just say it out of it. Uh, Jehoshaphat. The rumbling stops. And from the tree line, you hear this ha ha ha! As leaping out from the forest comes a massive giant, clad in overalls and plaid, with an axe by his side. He goes <laughs> leaping from the tree boundary and lands right next to the cabin. Question. Roll me a reflex. Okay. Also, question. Mm hmm. Does this man have a giant blue ox as well? No. Ten. Ten? Because I thought you were basing this off a of pulp onion. Never said I wasn't. As his feet come colliding into the ground, you are knocked on your ass. And let me see here. Do I have... No way, I wasn't able to load up that cheerful music. God damn. I had music set out for this dude. It would not load. Rip. Uh, you can just use Fredboat. Nah, I don't know how to mess around with it. I'm not gonna mess around with Fredboat right now. All right, and this individual will Just drop song down. Song will drop time. down to his Look knees up. and glance on in. Who goes there? Hello, no one. I'm waiting for Lindsman to say it. Lindsman, who? Uh, has managed to st actually steadied herself during the whole thing. Kind of shuffles on over to the window and looks on out. Um, Jehoshaphat. Ah, 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 ah. Please call me Joe. Big, big Joe. Big, big Joe. <laughs> this guy is huge. Um, Shit, he's a giant. 
Most giants in Pathfinder are like, oh, this one's 10 feet tall. This Can one's 15 feet tall. Can I roll anything to see what type of giant this guy is? Uh, knowledge of nature. Knowledge of nature coming up. Uh, oh, my thing says that there was connection error. Rip. You have failed. Uh, so, now yeah, let's try this again. This may take a bit. Fifth. Nature, there we go. All right. His general build, um, skin color, makes you believe that he's a cliff giant of some sort, but his height is kind of strange, because cliff giants aren't the tallest of them all. His height is rivaling that of cloud, of a cloud giant, oh. which are, like, colossal. Yep. <laughs> Cliff giants are usually like large, maybe huge at most. Uh, are cliff giants and uh, are cliff giants also hill giants or are those two different things? Two different things. Which is bigger? Uh, they're both about the same size, actually. The cloud giant is one of the taller ones. Uh, cliff giants and hill giants are the same size. Okay. They're both considered large. Okay. I guess Ivan will go out with a. Uh, I can't remember her name. Lensman. Lensman. You guys kind of awkwardly shuffle on out, and Big Joe is standing there with a big old smile, his hands on his hips as he kind of glances down at you all. How can I help you today? She kind of looks on. Um, we're seeking information about about the albino bullet in the area. Ah, you must be the contacts I was hoping for. Yes. Well, he kind of scratches his big old, big old giant beard. There has been reports around here of a great white bullet eh? tearing up the neighborhood. I'm just starting to turn into Sean Connery there. <laughs> mm. I heard the university was interested in taking a peek at it and... Tenor Lumberjack, Monty Python gift. Oh, thank you, kid. <laughs> and I'd like to be able to lend my assistance. So I need a... And kind of scratch the neck. Recently had a death in my family recently. A beloved pet of mine passed away and I was hoping I might have get the university's help in acquiring a uh, new one. Dr. Linsman kind of looks on over to you. We're, we're scientists. We're not animal handlers. We're here to study, not capture. Like, oh, no, no, I just, I mean, mm, there's just a thought. Not too much to ask, but what was your animal? A pug. <laughs> <laughs> All I wanted to know. <laughs> oh, thank goodness, Neville wasn't there. <laughs> I called him Breadcrumb. <laughs> he was the best assistant a agricultural department head could ever ask for. And he pulls oh. out. A, By the way, he what pulls is out Baxter's reaction to seeing this guy? Oh, did Baxter even go with him? Okay, uh, yeah, you've been... usually have him follow with me. He's been kind of... I, 
I wish I knew that earlier. I would have. Um, but da, 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 da. I'll say for now, he's kind of tucked behind you. He's he's a small creature. He barely comes up to your knee, and here is something that that you are barely coming up to its knee. So he's like, oh, oh I god. I would imagine I am barely coming up to its ankle. As yeah, is. yeah. I keep forgetting Baxter's with you. Why would I not have my employee with me? Here we go. Alright, let me see what his deal was. Da -da -da -da. Listen, think of it this way. And he kind of bends on down to Dr. Lensman. I, If I'm able to acquire this albino bolete, that'd be one last troublesome pest within the area. I keep good care of it and keep tabs on It's a valuable specimen. It's like, yes, in the wild. So I'm just saying it'd be beneficial for the county to have this thing under my jurisdiction. Yes, jurisdiction. Supervision? Yes, supervision. So you, you the only reason you're asking for help was so you could get a pet. I like to think of it as a travel buddy. <laughs> she kind of looks on over at you, Ivan. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be real honest. I'm I'm a scientist, not a big game warden. I'm not much of a uh, animal person myself. All the only animal I really have is Vladimir here, and he brings out Vladimir. Nah, kind of nods her head. Um. Well, we're gonna have to think about this, Jehoshaphat. Not exactly sure what you were even offer. I know where the beast is layered. Okay. And I'm big, I'm strong, I can help you capture it, get whatever you need from it. A poo sample, a spit sample, pee sample, I could give it a hug and you have all the pee you ever need. I we don't need pee. I will what? love it and hug it and call it George. I shall call it something. Boo boo. And it shall help till the land so that we may have new forest. While at the same time it's eating everything in town. I can, I can feed it cheese. <laughs> kind of looks on over you, Ivan. That was uh, out of game. <laughs> we'll talk about this with my associates when we get back. Uh, is this where we can usually meet up with you? It's like, ah, oh, yes. Either here or my home in the forest. Naturally, I can't have a home out in the yard. It depreciates my the neighbor's house value. Having a giant size house next to theirs. And plus, it's kind of tacky. <laughs> sure. No, right. I, I'm actually kind of looking at... I'm actually kind of looking at Lensman, and then I whisper, What the hell does he even fit in there? I don't think he does. I think that might be what the bell is for. Or something. I, it, oh. Mm. All right. Um. Well, unless my friend here has any questions for you, and she kind of starts the back on away. Um, name's Doctor Lensman from the University of Nuvid Nolik. This is Ivan. We'll be around town if you want to talk. Um. And uh, we'll get in touch with you later. I'll talk with my associates, see what they like to do. And that... Uh, looks on over. You got anything uh, need to ask him? Or? Uh, yes. Um, odd question. 
Who wouldn't happen to see an Atlan around besides me? He kind of looks on around him. Uh, not right here. Nobody in, like, really pristine-looking armor or anything like that. Who wears armor nowadays? Just curious. Hmm. Can't say that I have, little friend. Hmm. Okay, just be wary if you see man in armor. Try to avoid him. Duly noted. Because there's not much that can harm Big Big Joe. Ha ha ha! Throws me a sunbeam from the sky, might may say it differently. Mm -hmm. Alright. That. Joe will take his leave, he'll turn around. And with a single mighty step, he will launch himself back into the forest. The sound of his laughter echoing throughout the sky. <laughs> Why do I imagine the All Might laugh? Mm. Yeah, that's the vibes I'm getting from this guy, too. <laughs> See, also, I thought I might as well ask him about Anatar and stuff like that. Mm. All right. And with that, she will. You guys will begin to head it your way. On back to. Ba, 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 onto the hotel. And we'll reconvene for tonight. Da, 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 da. Thankfully, you don't have to set up any guard shift tonight. But Dr. Linsman will convene with you all. Alright. Everyone, how did it go? Got so many snakes. Cops are set up for the chupacabras. Good. Yep. Like five snakes. We apparently learn the reason why we were hired for a bullet is to get giant pet. Actually, no. The um, university originally heard the reports of an albino bullet, eh? but we received notification from. Jehoshaphat on the same matter that he was wanting to discuss with us. But we have met with Jehoshaphat. And yes, he is wanting to capture the creature to use as a pet. That seems ill advised. Yeah, exactly. You said he would feed it cheese. You don't... Sounds mm. like a great way for giant monster farts to gas a whole town. Uh, okay. She kind of just rubs her hands against her face. Um, I'm not exactly sure how I feel about that. I would still like to get a blood sample, or at least identify it, at least. Um, see whether or not it is Old Satchmo. But, I'm going to be honest, I don't know how I feel about capturing the creature as a pet. Those things are incredibly dangerous, especially if it's albino. Which means it has to fight twice as hard to get food and to fight for territory. It means its aggression level is going to be twice as that of a normal bullet, eh? By the way, what I'm not question... Do you have any idea what type of giant he was? I thought he was a cliff giant, but he's much bigger. He's like a cloud giant size. I wasn't even paying attention to that. I was expecting just a normal person. Well, maybe we could try oh, to... Oh, he's a giant, by the way. Yeah, I gathered as much. Maybe we could try to, uh... Like, scope it out on our own, see if maybe we could handle it, and if not, then I guess we have no real choice but to bring that guy in. Alright, alright, um... Probably that would be a day where we all go together. <laughs> not going to split the team on that one, I don't think. <laughs> uh, yeah, I would 
much rather you didn't split your division, split your tactics between a bullet, eh? Yeah. Thing has this. Is there anything we have big enough to catch Bolette? Uh, she kind of looks on over out the window to her trailer. I mean, <sighs> we just have to stab it with that spear thing, right? With the syringe on it. And I could maybe subdue it for a handful of seconds. <laughs> if I'm lucky. She nods. Well, that could work. I don't have anything with me large enough to capture a bolete. Um, I would personally just be satisfied with a picture of it, but a blood sample would be helpful. How fast they can run? How thick is Bolete skin? In also that. Incredibly tough. People used to make armor out of it. Mm. Is needle sharp enough to penetrate Bolete? If you manage to get it between the dorsal plating. Uh. So, so it would have to be very precise in where stabbing. Either on the dorsal plating, under in the belly anywhere where there's soft tissue it's armpit well if i can get in its head i'll have it roll over on its back i guess <laughs> uh, how fast do they run bring it up. not fast runners if i remember but very fast geekers Pathfinder. How fast would we have to run away? Should we, like, bring the car? <laughs> uh, well, they can outrun a human. Uh, their burrow oh, speed is the only slightly slower than that of a human, but they have the ability to leap from the ground. Um, so, why drive car when we can fly? Yes, okay, you're obsessed with flying the car, but I think that if it can outrun a human, that doesn't necessarily mean it can outrun just the fucking car. Like, on probably, the ground. <laughs> probably not. Probably not your car. But it could definitely outrun you on foot. Yeah. I've been whimpers well, a bit. We hmm. take the car. I mean, I don't know if we want to, like, spend the day... <clears throat> where some of the people who are good at seeing shit and tracking shit maybe try to narrow down its location maybe and then like the next day we can bring the whole team in on that I mean and, depends like, dedicate right. the day to that depends how long it takes us to get the tube of thing done yeah I mean I guess we might as well prioritize that, prioritize that first All right. Get that noted down. All right. Oh, wait, shit. We slept last night, didn't we? Yep. Mm -hmm. Any of you who slept regain uh, two hit points. Yeah, I was healthier today than I thought. <laughs> While I've been having all max HP. Oh, good for you. That <laughs> yeah, must be nice. Flex a little harder, you piece of shit. <laughs> Some of us have been perforated. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry that I'm a rain character. <laughs> All right. Da, 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 da. All right. No need to set up night shifts. All right. So, move on. By the way, are we also given dinner or just breakfast? Yeah, you're given dinner. Alright, so we're not spending rations. No, food is provided. Alright. Uh, really rations here. Exclamation point. Yep. Exclamation point, but I'm too lazy to type it. <laughs> okay, Alex. Uh, for probably after the game... Is there, like, a place where there's a list of all of the stuff in, like, the Survivor Dungeon Pack or whatever we all got? Oh, yeah, I thought I posted that. 
Uh, you probably uh, did, and I just super duper missed it because, like, a bunch of the stuff you were talking about, all of us having because we all had the same gear. I like don't have in my gear. Uh, yeah. Here we go. Okay, I will. Oh no, wait, that's something else. Stick it in the Discord, and I will be eternally grateful. Uh, that, and then that, and then that. God bless. Yeah, it's pinned in general. Yeah, I super duper don't have that shit written down, so I'm gonna do that as soon as the game's over. Okay. Yep, cello case, bedroll, belt pouch, flint and steel lighter, iron pot, mess kit, 50 feet rope, soap, lantern, five ration, canteens, two notebooks of pens. Yeah, switch your character to your character. Wait, what? Switch your character in D20 to your yeah, character. What? Oh, it is. It's on there. It's on for Mal. Still says Kitsune for me. You might need. To oh yeah, his character portrait swapped over. That's fine. Yeah, that's what I was talking about. Uh, wait. What are you talking about? My character portrait is Ivan. Yeah. yeah it's not for me. Whatever. I just could never remember Ivan's name off the top of my head. Ah! All right. Da, 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 da. All right. As night begins, this time the professor can spoon me. Ah, <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, thank God I was a marasa. <laughs> All right. As I mean, you hey, can... at least one of you is probably spooning somebody else. All right. As night begins to settle. All right. As you guys are kind of settling on in for the night, uh, let me see who gets the knockity knock. Oh, wait, no, D3. One, two. One, Ooh, two. more health. Hooray. All right. Oh, I'm one away from full. There. Burp. Never. There, cat. There we go. Man, I right. was, how come your DM lets you have two companions? <laughs> he is tech. Baxter is technically conf considered a group companion at this moment. He is a zero level character. Yeah, I am joking. So I'm probably going to keep him out of bow for now. I'm just going to be like training him for a bit. All right, as you guys are beginning to tuck on in for tonight, uh, da, 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 Ivan, no, not I, yeah, Ivan and Curtin, you guys hear a knock at your door. Ivan will get up. I'll get it. Right. Yep, right. you open on up. It is the uh, innkeeper. It's like, Hi Hello. there. Are you uh, are you Justice Fist by chance? Yes, that is us. Oh, uh, Phil leaved with them. Hi, uh, you guys have a visitor down at the front desk. Oh. Hey, look at Curtin. I'll go check it out. I'll go with him. I'll, I'll actually wake up Baxter. <laughs> and bring him. <laughs> okay. You wake up anybody else? Uh, sure, I'll, I'll knock on, uh, I'll knock on the door that, uh, Alex is in. I think I have a little bump rolls out of bed. <laughs> What's up? Hello, Alex. Hi. Um, apparently we have someone who is looking for us downstairs, associated with Justice Face. Oh shit. 
I'll go take a Neville and Jack, I guess. I go wake up the other two and drag them downstairs with us. <laughs> okay. You go wake up. Jack and... Oh, so you're damn. getting My Neville and Jack? catching on. Yep. Or, there we go. We got the message or something. Come on. All okay. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Gets up, stretches. Uh, Cracks neck, knuckles. I'll head down with curtain. After that. Okay. Yeah, it's like... I'd say it's like 9.30, maybe 10. In the morning? Uh, PM. Oh, so pretty much... As you guys are like settling on into bed. I forgot gotcha. to call in tonight. You need to make a note of that. As you guys start to head on downstairs, you are greeted by Feyrey. Oh, shit. Feyrey? <laughs> Oh. Favorite Bazaar. Uh, he's a strange character, isn't he? They're she. She. She, she runs the she. House of Gears. Oh. Did you bring oh. our swords back? That I did, hon. Hey. Woo nice Woo to see what you. What does my sword do? Come on outside and I'll show you. Or show you oh, something. Like Demonstration. Uh, suck ya. I'll go out with, uh, I'll go out and tell Baxter to follow us. Sorry to wake you guys up this late, but really get the full show. We're going to need a little bit of nighttime light. Oh, this sounds oh, like it's okay. going to be Baxter, something special. Baxter, you, you ready to see something interesting? Is it a chance to go back to bed? Yeah. <laughs> What the After the demonstration. Sleep. Okay, fine. Uh, he'll tell him you can go back to bed. First rule of goblinomics: beauty sleep is key. Seems to be a lot of first rules of goblinomics. Of course. <laughs> Everything. Every, every rule. rule. It's first for rule. Every rule there is for she made second a book. rule. There are no second-rate rules in goblinomics. Anyways. All right, Baxter. Have coming. you ever heard of thugonomics? They are inferior. And he wanders. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and he wanders oh. back upstairs. Feyre takes you on out. Uh, she has her pickup truck um, a little ways away. Hi. And you see. Um, you see a little figure kind of sitting in the passenger seat. You think it's gun gear at first, until you notice this homunculus in particular has just this persistent frowny face. Oh no. It's, it's gun, gun gear. gear. <laughs> it's gun gear with angry eyebrows. Copy and paste it on him. <laughs> it's nun gear. Feyre kind of leans on over inside the window. Alright, Odin, give me the keys. It's bum gear. <laughs> All right. She opens up the bed of her truck, and she's got your swords, um, kind of piled on in the back. And she hands Alex Nevo, uh, Jack. No, wait. Ne did Nevo? Nevo? Did you hand? No, no you I, kept yours. I always had mine. So it's Ivan, Alex, Jack, and Curtain. Uh, she hands each of you guys um, a file folder. I look and at my I, file. And I will... Here is... I'm going to show these each one at a time. Alex... I'm gonna zoom in on this. Uh, Jax? Nope. Uh, okay, which one was mine? Or wait, no, this this one's Jax. This uh, one's Jax. I have Tenu. Uh, mine was Galador. Okay, so that one was yours. And no, uh, Ivan, you had. No, yeah, you had Galador. And then. Duar. Okay, let me see Galador. Uh, where is that? You will find them in documents and handouts, Duskblade reports from House of Gears. 
Documents in handout. Uh, desk blades. Okay, so let's see what Galador says. Uh, open new page. Customer curtains. Um, excuse me, there is a bit of typo on this document. Yes, I know. Your boss has paid me some overtime so I could, uh, do a rush order on them. Gun Gear ended up doing a lot of the typing. So, pardon the messy writing. Powerful team. Ah. I'm trying to figure out what I'm supposed to read. Oh shit! My blade is fucking dope. Uh, da 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 da. I've never seen keep the fuse in several unique properties. Several I believe only can once the rate has reached high enough spiritual resonance. Of course, my services include a complimentary decursing. So. Oh, Never trust an artist. Not in the slightest, thankfully. Oh. However, that being said, they do have a bit of a flaw in them, which I'll get into in just a second. Uh -huh. Let's see which one. Reads she over Tinu's report, folds it up. So I'm a bit confused when I'm trying to read here. <laughs> Sees the word radioactive and holds it a little further away from me. <laughs> she doesn't hand back the swords just yet. What she does yeah, do. Okay. Yeah, your, yours is not the only one that's radioactive. Mine is, too. <laughs> I'm too radioactive on mine. No. She's going to grab hold of Narrabore, and oh, she's going to unsheath the blade, and she holds it up to the sky right in front of the moon, and Ooh. as the blade crosses uh, the face of the moon... Runes begin to glow along the length of the blade. Uh. At first, you remember when I called you and told you that my first assumptions were that they were Atlan? Uh huh. Well, turns out they're a little older than that. I was having a little bit of trouble identifying them. Um, until I managed to get hooked up with a professor who was having a lecture at uh, the local museum not too long ago. Uh, a professor of ancient Atlantean studies, uh, Idra Oceanus. Um, I managed to consult with him, and he believed that these, all of these in particular, are not Atlantean. They're older. These blades are elvish. These swords are older than Atlans. These were made by their ancestors, the Lunar Elves, one of the first people uh. of Avalon. Interesting. Sadly, like many elvish blades that have been dormant for so long, they have what's known as a lunar lock on them. One of the reasons Can why... Roll? Oh. oh, go ahead. Knowledge of Arcana. Thank you. Uh, uh, uh. Knowledge Arcana. Oh, wait, that's Vladimir. <laughs> she oops. Uh, mm -hmm. Knowledge Arcana. Akashic wielders. What's Akashic? Akashic. We'll get to that in a second. And <laughs> Alex can roll a knowledge of Arcana. If she wants. Trust can me. I? Can I? Be I? Oh, you know what? You can always just ask the professor. Yeah, I gotta do that because she doesn't know right. shit about magic. Ivan, are you rolling that? Kit? I think he either 
Pro. Hello? Oh, there you oh, are. There yeah, roll me what that does knowledge. What my 19 tell me? Oh, 19. Yours isn't even showing up on here. There it is. Oh, there we go. Okay, 19. The, the delay is super bad. That was a 15 second delay on that. The name sounds familiar, but you're not too entirely okay. sure. Yeah, because there's no way I'm going to make a roll on this, because I don't know shit about magic. I just what went to the report, me? and I'm I got like... disconnected. Okay. Like, Keshik, um, let me... Give me one second. Let me deal with Kit first. Yeah. Um, Ivan, your The name sounds familiar, but you cannot recall anything. Um, yeah, what does Lunar Lock mean? Well, it means a couple of things. Um, for one, their true abilities are hidden under the light of the moon, or hidden until they are revealed by the light of the moon. That might be why yes. any attempts to discern them during the daytime are damn near impossible. May I see my sword? Hands it off to you. Uh, he is going to, uh, he's going to point away from any buildings. Uh, and he is going to draw his sword. All right. Hold it towards the light of the moon. You see runes begin to glow across the blade's surface. Can I try to read these bl- runes? Um, what languages do you know? I know. Uh, Terralingua Low Common, Atlan Mulan, Tartulan, Aquin. Sign language and Shishin. None of these languages are, or, yeah, the languages on the blade or the runes on the blade do not match any language that you know of. It's elegant, very curvy. Do you have any idea what these runes say? Not a damn thing, I'm afraid. Uh, there's very few experts on the old Elvish language. I know it's Elvish, for one. Uh, the writing matches the same ones found on other Elvish artifacts, but no one really knows how to read them nowadays. So, it could be a cookie recipe, it could be the fate of the universe, as far as I know. I'm, I'm gonna try something. I doubt it will work, but I'll just say, Galador? Nothing. Okay. Didn't know if invoking the name would do something. So, you're you're keeping Galador? No. I'm not saying that I'm keeping Galador. Oh, okay. I'm just seeing if, like, anything happened. No, yeah, because you had mentioned uh, trading or something in the past. Yeah, because uh, the one that you got is apparently... Storm apparently kind of had that in mind with me. So Galador is meant to be yours. No, 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 not Galador. They are flexible enough to be used by anybody. The one that you are uh, that you yeah, I know, have I know, right now? I know. No, no, no. I'm telling, uh, I'm telling, uh, Dragon, Dragon this. Okay. <clears throat> Anywho, we'll right. work it out after session. Mm-hmm. Exclamation point. Yeah, that's Go what I was trying to work on, but don't. Oh, never mind. Go ahead, Kat. Uh, so what's an Akashic wielder? I say squinting at the report. Uh, Ferret kind of turns to you. So are you familiar with the concept of the three primal magics? old magic. Is the word magic in it, then you can probably assume I'm not familiar. All right. Magic must defeat magic. So, um, Akesh is an odd sort of magic. It is, it is an energy source that is tied to many things. Usually people associate it with living things. 
I like to think of it as being more tied to memory and time. Um, there are certain old types of magic wielders known as Akeshic wielders who draw raw magic from time and space to form constructs of pure arconic energy onto themselves. Um, the Anubans were some of the most famous users of them. Um, think of it as pulling a story from time and space and manifesting it onto yourself as a tangible thing. Okay. It's... It's odd. It's been around since almost the very beginning of spellcasting, just because it is so relatively easy to use. But the problem is, is that other magics just kind of outclass it. Um, so you don't really see it nowadays. Um, <laughs> whoever built this sword, though, whoever was using this sword was absolutely going up against the Kashuk wielders, though. It is very, very well attuned for dealing with people like that. That brand of magic. That's not to say it will only work against foes like that, but I feel like whoever was, whoever commissioned the sword was going after somebody with those specific talents. All right. So, uh, it's just sort of glows with the rune things, or? Um, as of right now, these swords resonate with the soul of their wielder. The more powerful the wielder, the more powerful the blade. I have a feeling that once they manage to Once their wielder becomes strong enough, then they'll start to shine. A little bit All like right. uh, Typhon over there, who resonates with its driver. Right. And let me see here. Let me bring up... I'll go over each of them with you in particular. Narrow board. Oh, nope. Bring it up. All right. Um, Brightburn, I'll let you know about that. Brightburn is an incredibly dangerous material, first and foremost. It's highly radioactive. The fact that somebody made it into a sword is a little terrifying. The fact that it's not burning through my own hands is even more terrifying. Um, she goes to her pickup truck, pulls out a Geiger counter, and starts to like run it over the edge of the blade. Or it, like holds it out like an inch away from the blade. It doesn't click right now, meaning that the substance within it is inert. But I have a feeling that once its wielder starts to grow in strength, this will become a little more dangerous. And she taps on the blade. Mm -hmm. And I recall it was like Narabor the something something, right? The Scorching Cure. Right. Mm -hmm. Said di says directly on the report. The Could bottom. I try something? Hold on. Mm -hmm. When we get back to you, Kit. Yeah, I also had a couple questions when you get around to it. I guess I'll just hang on to it and see what it can do. Nods. I was I able to try something with thankfully sword. track down your blade's last wielders once we managed to figure out that they were lunar locked. Um, the previous wielder of this blade was none other than Gunnar Thrun, uh, one of the famed Gimma leaders during uh, the Dark Ages of Thule, when the undead roamed the world. Ah. The wielder before that, I got the name of Neranor. I'm not familiar with it. But its creator, I'm a little more familiar with, Mindurin of the Forge Brothers of Glen. Supposedly, he was one of three famed elvish smiths during the mythic era. Wow. 
Oh. And these things would sell to a museum for a pretty penny, I bet. <laughs> what you hold in your hand is worth a king's ransom. One of these blades alone. Most oh, people like it. most people only see these in museum catalogs. The fact that a group of people wandered in with four and handed four of them off to me is unheard of. That's another one. <laughs> Well, technically, we have the museum sticks. couldn't figure that out. Indeed, like I said, they're lunar locked. If well, the moon well, is, we went there during the day, so that means they couldn't do jack squat. The light of the sun blocks out its true identity, at least for now. As long as that lunar lock is on there, these blades will only work at night, and when the sun is not, when the moon is not obscured. So we so, need to get stronger what for thing them is to work. To become nocturnal. You have to break the lunar lock if you wish them to be active during the day. How long is there that like a, a standard for breaking lunar locks or a lunar <coughs> key? I have no damn clue. Cool. I have cool. scoured every museum resource that I had. I even called up the Atlant Society. To see if I could get any clues, and they about as helpful as I am right now. <laughs> well, you've done definitely more than I, we could have ever asked for. Alright. Go on to Galador. Curtain? Oh, I wanted to try something oh. with Galador really quick. Go ahead. Uh, reading part of the note, I'm actually going to do something. Okay. Uh, I'm actually going to bring out my and remember, Galador is the one that I had, not yes. uh, curtains. Uh, so I'm going to bring out my flint, flint and seal match lighter, or oh. flint and seal lighter. I'm going to maybe, I'm going to try to put the flame towards the blade, see if anything happens. Okay. Nothing happens. Feyre okay. wanders on over to you. This blade, along with Tenu and Duar, I believe were part of a set. This, these three blades in particular were made by a very famous smith, a Viranar of the Thirteen Nails. Um, he's perhaps one of the most famed elvish smiths that we even know of, mostly because he made so many. He was famed for the type of magic known as the Alloyed Blade. Um, where he would use an ancient power known as true naming to literally speak the metals together to form something brand new. He would speak the metals true name. It's a universal sound and fuse the materials together. I nod as I keep trying to put the flame towards the blade. <laughs> They're its alloyed ability, I'm afraid, will not awaken for some time. All of these blades are scaling. They will resonate with the soul of their wielder. And the three are set. I'm you noticing a lot of similarities between these three. Like I told Alex when I first when I first contacted her, I I believed that they were made by the exact same person and once I managed to break, or at least peek through the lunar lock, I was able to confirm it that each three of them were made by Avenar. So, so which wow. one was, which one is actually Curtains? Uh, Curtains was, Curtain had a hold of Duar. And it looks okay. like... Oh, look at that one. Yeah, you mixed up the, the, the whoever... Yeah, yeah, I, I know, I caught, the, I caught that later to Dave. It's fine, we know the difference. But I I really like Tenu because I have all the dangerous metals. I got adamantine, bitch. That it, shit's scary. It looks like. Does she give us the swords when I, she finishes talking about them? Yes. Mm -hmm. Honestly, honestly, I'm uh, waving mine around in a way that clearly indicates that I don't I have, have a sword right now. <laughs> Yeah, it that's does. Fine. And from what it seems like, it seems well suited to your character. So, 
It looks like this one's previous owner was Scylla of Blue Water, who I'm finding that the four you handed off to me were owned, or at one point wielded, by the ancient kings who managed to bring together Thule. I'm wondering if these... I'm very positive that these were the blades used to fight in the Undead War. It looks like before that, wielded by somebody named Vekinar of the Sun-Touched Mountain. I'm unfamiliar with who that is. That sounds about right, considering where we found these damn things. And you don't have to tell me where you got a hold of them. I'm not going to ask how you managed to get your hands on so many elvish blades. But just a heads up, you are holding... <laughs> she kind of... I'm finding... Uh, it's hard to even tell you all how valuable these things are. These come. These blades are over 10,000 years old. They predate Atlan kind. These are heritage weapons. These are artifacts. Gives a small smile <clears throat> as he takes Tinu and straps it to his side. Here we go. Holds up the report in his hand, which he'd folded up earlier after reading it um, over. I appreciate I your oh. work. You've done beyond, far beyond what I could have imagined possible. And that I thank you. I aim the please. Last and foremost. Honestly, oh, oh. here we go. And yours was wielded by Ahote Swiftwind of the Shadow Tongue Tribe. And before that, someone by the name of Kalima the Dawn Hunter. And as for you, yeah. Oh, oh wait. Curtain. She hands over Duar to you. Again, another blade of Avenar of thirteen nails. Previous wielder is a name I'm familiar with, Tartarus Noctis, one of the leaders of the Umbran people when they first arrived or when they first stepped foot onto Thule. Before that, wielded by someone by the name of Wraithstalker Faradir and Kit. Oh wait. That name sounds familiar to you. Oh. You remember down in that crypt as you approached a coffin a name whispered into your ear Faradir Faradir I remember hearing that name when we found the blades The metals within this weapon bend light and darkness and are effective against the undead. Uh, Carlton, question. Mm. Would you mind if I see your blade for a second? I'm keeping my blade. I like my blade. <laughs> because of the potential of Tenu. Seeing the properties between the light and dark magic seem very effective for my kind of fighting style, but you're welcome to take a look. I'm just still waving my uh, arm like an idiot. <laughs> I, I hold, hold hold out my hand to just take a look at it. <sighs> Hands it too. Does anything happen when I touch this Mm, nothing. It holds easy in your hand. Kind of like how when you mm. when you were wielding those swords earlier, a sense of 
familiarity to them that allows you to wield them. This blade feels... Oh. This blade feel... Does it feel like different compared to uh, Galador? Um, no, they actually feel like they are... It's weird because they feel like they are the exact same weight. Like, if somebody controlled Seed, a sword, <laughs> it's like that. They're the exact same shape, exact same size, okay. exact same uh, weight. The only difference is, is that their like metals are different colors. That also applies to my blade as well. Mm -hmm. I believe all three of ours are, I have, we're, are... We're a trio of misfits with three different swords made of different metals. They're all made the same. They're just different in reality with their different abilities. I would like to try something. All right. Seeing the, like, uh, dark and light manipulation, I'd like to try making my sphere of darkness really quick and just see if something happens when I strike it with uh, tour. Alright. Or through door. Mm, yeah. Nothing happens. Fairy lays a hand on you. The alloyed property is dormant until now. I don't believe it'll activate until much later. Let's see. The curtain. Knowing that this does manipulate light and darkness, perhaps you would be interested in switching with me since I know some dark magic. Uh, for me, it would help stay hidden. I'm, I might be better on the front. I might be okay on the front lines, but long distance is best for me. The elemental magic would suit you well. I'm no magic user. Any range capabilities comes from my rifle. I see. Plus the cool. properties to suit you. Wait, which properties? The cold properties. The from the solar silver effect. Uh, hold on, wait. I'm trying to figure out what you mean. The solar silver. Uh, look down at the bottom. It tells I you the metals and its ability. I see void glass. Oh, wait, I'm looking at the wrong one. <laughs> Dumbass. Uh, solar silver. Uh, appears to stave off freezing t temperatures. I I don't understand that. I don't have any cold damage. I think that just means overall of what it can do. Just an examination and a detail of what the metal has proficiency with. That's what I'm gathering from this above game. I mean, this would definitely help my destruction sphere a bit more. I, I, I like all of mine because I have deadly shit. <laughs> yeah, my, mine seems to be much more uh, elementalist based. Good. I have a lot of shit. Right. Tenu's mine. <laughs> Also, this could probably <laughs> very much help with my uh, storm sphere if I go into it. Good. I'm glad we came to a consensus. I'm it just will saying. adapt as needed to you. With that, Feyre will nod her hat. I'll be getting on back home. I, I'll tell you what. I'm going to keep doing a little bit of research, see what I can find on these puppies in particular because they piqued my interest. And if you two, if your friends ever want to have their blades taken a look at, I'd be more than happy to. Looks at Nevo. Looks at Nevo, gives him a wink. Uh, sure. Uh, thing is, I won't really have a weapon to, like, I guess I'm just gonna have to mm. really count on Buddy for a while. Hold on. Or a I, bit. I tell you what, hold on to it for now. Perhaps maybe Wait. when we're done with this job, we could take a bit of downtime so that way you can have it examined. And 
until then, if you have any other questions, feel free to ask me. You know where to call me. Of course, and you know where to call us. Yep. Hmm? It helps to have a tracker in the car. And with that, she turns around. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you never cease to amaze me, Feyre. Damn straight. And she won two fingers to loot. <laughs> she wanders over to her pickup truck, and she wanders over to the passenger side, and she pokes her head on in. Odin, you take the wheel. I need to take a nap. <laughs> well, I don't know about this. You, like I got you your dictionaries. You can reach the tire. You can reach the pedals. Ah! <laughs> oh, what about the the brakes in the gas? <laughs> I'm walking. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh. And with oh, God. that, we shall call it for tonight. <laughs>